given to one part per million. So when people say it's just a tiny amount going on the water supply, it's, it's making, it's, it's actually a massive deal. It's a huge problem. So I just want to go through briefly, not too much detail on these, but ASH 2017, pre-natal fluoride exposure, cognitive outcomes, children at four and six, 12 years of age. So in the say high prenatal fluoride exposure was associated with lower scores on tests of cognitive function in the offspring at four and six to five. That's the first of them. Green is the Canadian study. Again, same for the dark tank. This can say so what they do is they say you've only got one study. There's only one per, one study that we're talking about here. This confirms Ash Ash. Next slide, please. After accounting for factors associated with fluoride metabolism, children with intellectual abilities, a one milligram per litre increase in maternal urinary fluoride was associated with a 4.5 lower IQ score in boys. 4.5 IQ drop. Lead lowered IQ 4.25. Yeah. Okay, that, that came out in 2016. Confirmation. The Ministry of Health defended lead right up until 1996. They said it was completely safe until they said, well, we should probably take it out of petrol and let it paint. We know in 2016, using the Dunedin Longitudinal data, that it was lower in children's IQ, 4.25 IQ points. What does that mean? What does that mean, 4.25 IQ points? That's shifting, the, the, if you look at the bell curve, right, it's, shift, it's doubling the number of um, mentally handicapped and halving the number of geniuses. And it, um, if you have a look at, um, is it time to protect our brain from fluoride? An article by Christine Till, um, Dr. Linda Birnbaum, and Bruce Lampier, who's the, the lead specialist, they talk about this shifting of the IQ down. This has been happening since 1966 in Auckland, so that three generations of lowering of IQ. Okay, I just want you to kind of get your head around what's happening here. Next slide, please. So, it was published in the top rated American Medical Association Journal of Pediatrics, and we're going to hear from the editors of the, the, that journal shortly. It compared urea fluoridated versus non fluoridated. It was confirmation of Bash Ash. Bash Ash had 500 mother pair, mother child pair, um, sorry, 300 Bash Ash and 500 in this study. And I'll just, um, one more over here, and if we can bring that up. So I'm going to bring up the commentary. They've done a podcast because this was so controversial. Pretty much everything on fluoridation is controversial. You can't talk about anything, right? <laughs> it's ridiculous. But this was the accompanying podcast. You can go and listen to it to yourself. But this was the commentary from, from Paul Nutt. Can you just play that? Just All right. right. The, the, the overall finding was that, as you would expect, the mothers who lived in fluoridated areas had a higher fluoride concentration in their urine and a higher fluoride concentration intake during pregnancy than mothers who lived in non-fluoridated areas. And there seemed to be an effect upon their kids' IQ. Now, this effect was only seen in boys, where a one milligram per liter increase in the maternal urinary fluoride concentration was associated with a five point lower score on the boy's IQ. Right. And effect size, which is which, which is sizable. Which so is sizable. Par with lead. Right, it is. And we, and, you know, and, and the girls, they, found actually a non-significant increase in their IQ. The effect size is really quite large because I think we, you know, you think about it really in terms of not the individual child so much as the shift in the curve. Right. And the, the shift in the curve right. now being shifted to the left for boys, that's a real concern because then you look at the tails and the tails may be quite low. Right. That's right. So, and so that's, that's the tails we're talking about, right? So we're shifting down across more mentally challenged and having less geniuses. The average person, you probably, you know, if you're going from, if you're going from sort of here in the curve to here, you're probably not going to notice it too much, right? But these ones here, who are at sort of 70, going down to 65, that is massive. That's a huge problem. We talk about having challenging situations in schools and, and struggling with those sorts of environments. You have to look at this, this issue first, right? And all we have to do is turn the spidget off, the injector, and we just have to stop the traumatic brain. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 
So this is bottle feeding babies. This is the till 2020. So it's not just, so what we just looked at, dash, dash and green, was maternal pregnancies, right? What we're looking at now is, is there an impact from fluoride on infant formula reconstitution and IQ? Next slide. Nine IQ point reductions. For each one milligram increase in tap water per day. Oh yeah, that's sunk in for a second. Nine IQ point reduction. Okay, so this is the top research. Till is one of the top researchers in the world. She's um, producing this research on the Canadian studies. Um, <coughs> breast milk has clear inflammation, 0.004 parts per million fluoride. Tiny amount of fluoride. So what bottle feeding babies are getting with reconstituted water that's fluoridated, they're getting 250 times more fluoride than, than breast milk. That, in, on its own, is <laughs> blatantly obvious, right? The next slide, please. So, if that wasn't bad enough, you've got all sorts of different genetics and what people have, uh, have got in their own sort of <coughs> chemical makeup and how they're operating, right? So, we've got a problem with iodine in New Zealand, um, lowered iodine uh, uh, capacity, whatever you want to call it. If a this Goodman study 2022 came out in August last year. If your if the mother was not iodine deficient, you only get a five IQ point reduction. If you were iodine deficient, you get a nine point IQ reduction. So it's not just the average person, because we're all different, we've all got our own things going on, chemical makeup and all this sort of thing. 9 point IQ reduction if the pregnant mother was iodine deficient. Next slide please. But there's more. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This just goes on and on. So this study, 2019, is talking about ADHD and ADD. We found a 600% higher risk of ADHD for every one milligram per litre increase in tap water. In conclusion, we found that higher tap water fluoride levels and fluoridation of municipal water supplies were associated with higher risk of an ADHD diagnosis, as well as an increased symptoms of hyperactivity and attention, especially among adolescents. So we talk about, again, our schools being difficult, potentially difficult places to be, with our students struggling to stay calm and still, and all the rest of it. 52% of the country is getting us. Do you think this could be a problem? Mm. Right? Next slide, please. This came out last week, June 2023. I'll just go to the next slide. Um, the conclusion, maternal exposure to drinking water fluoridated recommended 0 0.7 with fluoridated at a high level. During pregnancy was associated with poorer control and cognitive flexibility. This is talking about ADD, ADHD and, and self-control, right? This supports the Riddell work. Again, I'm, we're trying to, I'm trying to emphasize, this is not just one study. There's multiple studies and they're flooding out, just rolling out, right? Next slide, please. So, who is the National Toxicology Program? They are an interagency collaboration within the US Department of Health and Human Services. They are a partnership with the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, which is part of the CDC. It's a big one. Food and Drug Administration, National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. These are the top organizations in the United States. Right? So next slide, please. What they do is they focus on testing, research, analysis of, agent, uh, of agents of concern to identify toxic and biological effects, provide information, strengthen the science base, inform decisions by the health regulatory and research agencies to safeguard the public health. This, this, the, these guys, this is who you want doing your research. They are the best in the world, okay? So they have just completed a six year study. Why did it take six years? Because there's a lot of politics involved in fluoridation. A huge amount of politics. They've had multiple peer reviews because they didn't like the answer that they were getting. Okay? 
And this is all available now because we've got this court case that's going on. The next date is the 24th of January, 2024. And all of this information is just coming out. And it's all there for you to share. It's awesome. Next one. In 2015, the Fluoride Action Network nominated Fluoride for a systematic review by the NTP. Councillors agreed that they would do that. <coughs> this takes a lot, quite a lot of convincing to happen. In that meeting in 2015, I watched it online, Dr Linda Birnbaum, who was the director of the NTP at the time and the um, director of the NIEHS, she said we know nothing about the differential susceptibility and vulnerability that occurs within the population. What does that mean? That means everyone's different, how do they cope? We don't know nothing about it, what this chemical is doing to them, right? Next slide, please. Uh, the monograph and meta-analysis completed. They concluded that prenatal and early life exposures can reduce IQ. The meta-analysis reported that 52 of 55 studies found lower IQ with higher fluoride exposures, 95% consistency. How many studies do you need, mm. Ministry of Health? Mm. Do you want 150? Do we have to go another 20 years? Or is that it? Have we, have we got enough yet? Mm -hmm. You know? 52 out of 55, seven IQ <coughs> point reduction. That is high and low studies. Okay, so 0 0.7 and up three to four IQ points, right? Uh, sorry, three to four milligrams per litre. Next slide, please. So when you look at the high quality studies, the high quality based on creation, design and data, and how they've pulled it together, okay, you've got 19 of those studies. 18 of those high quality studies show a lowering of IQ. There's more studies now on fluoride than there was on lead. Right? 4.25 point IQ reduction in lead. About a five IQ point reduction in fluoride. Meta-analysis could not detect the safe level of exposure. No safe threshold. Okay? So when you look at the water, fluor water fluoridation, there is no safe threshold for any level. The NTP recognised that the high quality studies, as I said before, the Canadian-Mexico NIH funded studies, National Institutes of Health, US government, they've been doing the studies on this. Those studies found an IQ reduction range of between three to nine IQ points. Three to nine IQ points, guys. On average, one part per million increase caused a five IQ point reduction per milligram per litre. This is one part per million in New Zealand. This is the same thing. We fluoridate at 0.7 to one part per million. I don't know, who feels sick about what's mm. happening here? Because mm. it's just this is just outrageous, right? So next next slide. This is directly from the meta analysis, September 22, uh, 2022 meta analysis. You can go and look at this. You can see it there at point seven. There's a three IQ point reduction. One point five. There's a six IQ point reduction. So about one one part per million is about a five IQ point reduction. Next slide, please. So what we're saying and what the campaign is, and we're speaking all through the country now, you guys are the guinea pigs, as uh, Dave Schwartz would say, for this first uh, version. Um, fluoride is new lead. That's what we're saying. The comparisons are just undeniable. So we need you to, we need you to get that on board and the fluoride is new lead. Just talk about it with your friends and family. And so just being your presentation, it's unbelievable, it's outrageous. Why are we doing that? Relationship between fluoride and IQ loss can be compared directly to that between lead and IQ, as shown in the graph from the 2005 paper that pulled data from the seven strongest studies, Land Fair 2005. Bush Land Fair. Next slide, please. So you can see the similarities with, with both of these um, charts, both coming down. Same thing, right? Next slide, please. So when we say fluoride is a new lead, it's not just us saying it, it's not just me going, I'm, it's my opinion that this is the situation. These people are saying, David Bellingham, author of over 500 epidemium, uh, sorry, papers, neurotoxic chemicals, right? It's actually very similar to the effect size that's seen with childhood exposure to lead. 
edit as you've just heard before. It's an effect size which is sizable on par with lead. Next slide, please. Christine Till, who's been doing a lot of this work and research. 4.5 points is a dramatic loss of IQ, comparable to what you'd see with lead exposure. Dr. Fede Grunjean, he's the expert on mercury neurotoxicity. He does the work for the US EPA on mercury. Fluoride seems to fit in with lead, mercury, and other poisons that cause chemical brain drain. He was involved in the 2012 study uh, <coughs> for analysis that showed, that I showed you earlier, 26 of 27 states. Next slide, please. This is what they use, the Ministry of Health uses, to defend all of this, all of this research. This one study that's a part of the 52 of 50, uh, the 55 studies, right? They'll, they'll say the broad bank study deletes everything I've just shown you, right? So everything I've just said, all of the scientists are saying that we've got a real problem. They just say the broad bank study from 2015 is, um, solves all the problems, right? He's a dentist to start with. He's your first pointer. Not considered high quality by the NCP, and I'm going to go through that shortly. We might skip to the end part, but I'll show you what they've actually written because this is critical. You're going to hear this in the media and from people, and they're going to say, "Oh, but Broadbent, 2015. Broadbent's eight years old now, and there's been about uh, an additional 40 papers that have come out, right? Virtually no children in the control group compared to fluoride pits 990." with 99 non fluoridates 139 were taking fluoride tablets. Who do you think was taking the fluoride tablets? Have a guess. The non fluoridated The non fluoridated So there's no control group. They also did not account for maternal exposure, which is what the, the Bashash and Green studies did, right? The high quality studies. Next slide, please. This is what's in the NCP report word for word because I want to make sure that we've got a, a frequent critical limitation among the high risk of bias studies was a lack of information regarding exposure or poor exposure characterizations. In one case, multiple sources of fluoride exposure were assessed separately without properly controlling for the other sources of exposure, which could cause bias, could bias the results. Next slide. Next slide. For example, there were 99 children included in the non fluoridated area for a community with fluoridation, but there was no indication that, that these 99 children were not some of the 139 children that had ever used supplemental fluoride tablets or the 634 children that had always used fluoride toothpaste. Therefore, comparing fluoridated areas to non fluoridated areas without accounting for other sources of exposure that might occur in these non fluoridated areas would bias the results towards null. This is the NTP saying this, not me. This is the NTP, the top science scientists in the world, the collaboration to look at it. They're saying broadband is not worth anything. Mm -hmm. Bollocks. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So, after all of that, I'll get to your questions shortly. We need your help, big time. So, the reason I'm here is to not only help you, but you've got to help the whole country. You guys need to put up a fight against us. This is this is um, um, time to stand up. So more evidence of harm from fluoride than lead uh, than we have now. Okay, there's more evidence of harm now. Um, please share this information and demand that fluoridation be stopped. It's not good enough anymore to just turn up and say, please stop it, and they say go away. You've got to push back. You've got to push back now. Next slide, please. Contact your MP, your counsellors, ask why they're deliberately adding a neurotoxin to the water supply. That's a great icebreaker. Um, and you just you just ask the question, you just keep your mouth shut, you just see what they say. Why are you deliberately adding a neurotoxin to the water supply? I don't care what their motivations are, who knows? I don't know what it is, I've got no idea. You can speculate and you're saying whatever, but that is a fact. After everything I've just shown you, the NTP report, everything else, that's a fact. Contact candidates of various parties as well. Go under fluoride.org.nz under action. What are the parties' positions? We had Shane Rethy asked, why is he adding a neurotoxin to the water supply? 
on film the other day from Mary Byrne. <clears throat> and he said, you've got your science, I've got my science. Mary said, well, what is it? Because we've got this, what have you got? So at the same time, I'd actually been contacting him to get, provide him some information. And he can't, and the, the, his offer, I said, well, what is it? Flip him through the, um, the tape, the, you know, the video, and, and he said, well, well, what is it? So he comes back with a submission from 2017 from the Royal New Zealand College of GPs using the 2014 Blackman Skeg Review, which is completely full of holes. It's nine years old. And he, that's his science, guys. <laughs> and so I put on Facebook, why do I know more about fluoridation than the National Party spokesman for fluoridation? That's ridiculous. This is so, this is so stupid. Right? So put pressure on them and just give them an opportunity to, to hang themselves by giving them some time to answer, right? We, we, we need some support. We're trying to get around the country. We've actually some exciting news. We're flying to, um, Mary and I are flying to Christchurch on the 26th. We've got a speaking um, gig in Ashburton on the 26th. And then we're also going on to Timaru to do a debate. We're up against two dentists. So we're finally at the point, first they ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they debate you, then you win, right? So we're very close now, because when they debate us, we're gonna pull all this out, and we're gonna say, what you got? They've got nothing. So if you can support us, that's awesome. The books, as I said, are $20. Really appreciate that. Um, we're trying to raise money to print these to give to councils and councillors and, and um, community board members. Uh, next slide, please. And this is the debate that we've got lined up. Um, so thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions you've got. And yeah, please do something about it. <laughs> Thanks. What fluoride do they use in fluoride tablets? That, that is pharmaceutical grade. Um, I have to get the bottle out 